The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Daryl Martin. All right, folks, how are you doing today? This is Daryl Martin bringing you to the Diagnostic Trading Hour, and I hope everybody is having a fabulous Wednesday. And uh, just looking at the day right now, I'm going to go ahead and get you updated right now on where the market is currently trading across the board. So we got the S&P up 7 points. We got the NASDAQ up 9.5 points. We got the Russell up 5.9 points, and we got the Dow up a mere 20 points. So a lot of uh, up and down movement going on over in the indices. And looking over at uh, copper, copper is up over 1% on the day already. And we got silver is up almost a percent right now. It's up 0.246. And we got gold up 5.5 uh, points on the day. We got on our agricultural side, we got uh, corn sort of quiet for the day compared to yesterday's close. is up 5 points on the day right now. Soybeans is up 4.75. And uh, taking a look over at our energy sector, we got oil right now just down a mere 13, 14 cents on the day after a drop after that uh, higher than expected oil inventory report. Not really a uh, big surprise. Uh, we talked about this, uh, I want to believe either last week or the week before, we talked about how, you know, with uh, basically with drilling's up. So, and production is up, and it's the highest level it's been in like 15 years. So, you know, across the board. I'm not saying on federal lands, okay, <laughs> for those of you who watch the elections. Not talking about the federal lands. We're talking about oil production overall is high and storage is high. And so the expectation that this number continues to come in high uh, should not be a big surprise. And then um, you can see right there, looking at that oil uh, future contract I have sitting right there on the uh, t if you're on the Tiger's Den or if you're on Tiger TV, then you can see right now, and you can see uh, right there where it dropped off at 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern Time, and just came on down right to about a half deviation down, and then stopped and uh, moved on back up. Looking on over at natural gas. Let's see, natural gas is up 0.039. That's actually a 1% move on natural gas. On so natural gas, big move on the day. And looking over at our currencies, we got the euro dollar right now up 69 pips, the pound dollar up 38, the Aussie dollar up 93, US yen is down 14, US franc down 39, and US Canadian is down 63. So basically overall on the day, the dollar is getting pounded, everything else is moving up. And uh, looking at how that's affecting everything else, we'll go ahead and we'll check out right now our natural gas contracts. And natural gas, like I said, moving up strong on the day. And we need to see that continued rise. And uh, it's been a really, really, really strong move. And um, we've been seeing, of course, a lot of these big moves coming from natural gas lately. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see here. I'm going to pull up the deviation levels, get those posted for you so you can check them out and see what's going on. And let's see here. There we go. Deviation levels being posted right now for you, so you can look at those and just look at the levels for the current trading day. And again, those are viewable right now on Tiger TV and over in the Tiger's Den. And go ahead and look at what's going on on the fundamental side of things. Well, we had a few things happen, of course. Um, earnings going off like crazy, you know, everywhere. Uh, and then they'll be going off for you know the next few weeks. So just get used to it. It's earnings season, and. Uh, you know, which is nice. You get a little volatility and all that, but it can be a little bit hectic because things can fly up, fly down, and uh, you know those turning points can be pretty harsh whenever you got earnings season. So just make sure you're using things like deviation levels and you know tight stops. And uh, as always, you want to make sure that you maximize your leverage, limit your risk, and use things like deviation levels to be one step ahead of the markets. And the way to maximize your leverage and limit your risk is to use Nadex. So uh, if you don't have an Nadex account, um, or if you want to follow along, check it out, try it out, hop on over to TFNN.com. Uh, basically, it's a new age, a new era in the markets. I think everybody would agree with that. It seems like a new era every single year, and with every single new Fed announcement, and <laughs> you know, elections are coming up, and we got these QE things going on in Spain, still a big question mark, and you know, on down the list. You've got to have a way to protect yourself, okay? 
And just think, where would you, would you have been if you had a way to limit your risk and maximize your leverage over the last few years? What would that have done for your trading account? Well, don't say, don't go, man, I wish I would have had this three years ago. In three years, do it right now. Hop over to TFNN.com, click on Nadex, click on that Nadex banner, and you can get a demo account. You can try it out for a couple of weeks. You put $25,000 of funny money in your account. It takes 15 seconds. And you just put in a username, first name, last name, phone, and email address. Click apply for demo. And it's really easy. Again, it's, it's fake money. So when you go in on the demo, and so you can learn about it, and of course, you can check out the archives of the show where I go through and I talk about what are binaries, what are what I call box spreads, they call bull spreads. Um, I call them boxes because they look like a box, put them on the chart, and they're not bullish. They're bullish if you buy them. They're bearish if you sell them. But either way, the spreads on Nadex, and you can get access to both. And so fill that on in, and uh, they'll send you an email. You'll have that in 15 seconds. And uh, get a live account, okay? And then you can, you know, if you want to know how to get your uh, demo account extended, just let me know. Email me, dmartin at tfnn.com, or you can find it on TFNN's website there. And uh, go to, you know, um, create account, and then click on start. And from start to funded can be done in as little as five minutes. And how much to fund an account? Do you have to have 5000 10000 20000 dollars No, you can literally fund an account with only 100 bucks. Now, if you're going to start trading live, do you want more than $100 in there? Yeah, probably. You know, I mean, can you do multiple trades for less than $100? Yeah, you actually can. You can do trades for $5, $10, $20, $30, you know. But, you know, as a good trader, psychologically, it sort of messes you up if you go in and you lose 50 bucks on a $100 account, okay? So you want to make sure, you know, ideally put, put a decent amount in there. It doesn't mean you have to risk it all, but just the psychological effect. But, uh, you know, only $100 is required to fund, and then, of course, you can get your account extended. Again, just let me know if you need help with that, and I'll help you out. Also, if you're needing access to charts and things like that, I can help you out on that as well. Uh, they do have charts on the binaries and on the spreads, but you're going to need charts on the underlying. These follow the Forex spot market, and they follow the futures commodities and futures indices. So they're not, like, if you're trading the S&P 500 on here, you're not trading the spiders, the SPY. ETF. You're not trading the SPX index. You are trading the S&P 500 futures. Is it important? Yes. Okay. You need to be looking at the correct underlying contract because the prices will be different. Okay. And um, to fully understand the products, you need that happening. So anyways, but hop on over there and again, get a demo account, email me with any questions, call in with any questions. And as always on TFN.com, you can see our number right there. Give me a call 877-927-6648. And uh, get started right now. I mean, like I said, it's a new era. Don't be saying in three years, I wish I would have started that Nadex thing three years ago. All right? So you have a decision to make. Are you going to start limiting your risk and maximizing your leverage? Yes. Right. Is there a learning process? Yeah. On anything, there's a learning process. But, you know, if you're a trader and you know how to trade up and down, if that's, you know, your goal, but you're like, man, I'm, I'm right a lot, but I get kicked out a whole lot. Well, that's, that's what Nadex is for. Okay, and that's where the, you know, the spreads come in. And the binaries are a totally different animal. So, you know, pick one of them. Stick with it, learn it, and then expand out and add the other one in. Or just pick one market and learn how to do the binaries on the S&P 500, or what they call the US 500. And also learn how to do the spreads on the US 500. Just focus in on one market. Once you understand one market, the other ones really work the same. So it makes it pretty easy. Instead of trying to tackle like 17 you know, different markets at once, like you can trade, what can you trade all over on Nadex? All right. Well, they have products that mirror the following. The S&P 500, and they, again, these are futures. The NASDAQ 100. They got the Russell 2000. They have your Dow 30, of course, or, you know, Dow futures there. And then you go over and you also have access to looking at the Nikkei. You have access to the DAX. You have access to the Nikkei, the DAX, and you also have access to gold and silver and copper. And you have access to, let's see here, on the fork side, you got Aussie dollar, pound dollar, Euro dollar, Euro yen, pound yen, US yen, and you also have access to US Canadian, US franc, and you have access to corn, and you have access to soybeans, and you have access to oil, and you have access to natural gas. So, I mean, there's just a wide variety of markets that you have access to. Also, you have access to the FTSE 100. That was the one I was trying to remember there a second ago. And um, so you have access to all these markets in one account, and you don't have to put 20 grand in to trade it. You know, you don't need to, okay? So you can get in there, you can get that thing going and get it started. It's really built, it's focused towards retail traders. You don't have any commissions. You're not going through a broker middleman. You're going direct to the exchange. So you just have exchange fees. Well, you know what? If you trade futures, you have exchange fees too, but you also have commissions. On Nadex, you don't have the commissions on top of the exchange fees. And they even cap out their exchange fees. So once you surpass, like, say, 
10 contracts, which, I mean, could literally be only a couple hundred dollars on a trade, then the exchange fees cost nothing after that for that entire order that you place. And uh, But again, don't try to focus on all of those markets at once. Just get one down just to understand the product. That's the strategy side of trading. I talked about this in Tampa. I went into strategy and system and style. And I said the first thing you need to know is strategy. You need to understand how a product works. And so you're going to want to hop over here, you know, whatever you trade right now. I mean, if you like trading the Spider ETFs or, you know, the Qs or, you know, the Russell 2000 or, you know, gold or silver, something that interests you. It's always good if you can find something that interests you, okay? Focus on that market and then focus on the binaries or the bull spreads or both, okay, depending upon if you feel like you can tackle both at the same time. And if you find that you're not liking one, you may end up liking the other, like, when I first started out, I liked the bull spreads. I didn't like the binaries that much. I like both now, but I definitely favor the bull spreads. Why? Well, because it's more like trading the underlying market, whereas the binaries are more of a select a strike and make your play, you know? So, I mean, they, they both have huge advantages. They both can be used for hedging. The bull spreads, just they're more like the underlying market. So it's more how a trader already thinks. There's not a lot of changing in what you got to do as far as how the bull spreads work. And, uh, or, you know, I guess called box spreads. Anyways, but, uh, you know, check it out and, you know, get on here and uh, just see how it works. So let's go ahead and let's check out what has happened in the markets. Well, um, last night, not really much happened. A little, you know, a couple of small reports out of Australia, nothing big. But then uh, Britain did have their claimant count change. And uh, that number comes out from their national statistics office. And it's the change of number of people claiming unemployment related benefits during the previous month. And um, so that number, you know, went down, <laughs> which is good. Um, it's sort of weird. It's, you know, it's, it's an odd thing. But a lower number is better because that's less people claiming. And um, the last time it came in at 14.2, this time it came in at 4.0. You can hop over. You can uh, check out a chart like on the pound dollar. And you can sort of see when that report came out at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central. And right here, Okay. Obviously, it was good news for the pound. Poof, took off. So, um, and then, you know, it's been going up pretty much ever since. Let's see here. And then it, I guess it has given up some after this morning. But, uh, you know, just looking at that right there, I mean, it took off. And it basically came back down right to where it launched up to right after the news. So, that's a clue for you. When you see moves like that, a lot of times that can create a new resistance support line. Okay? So, it sort of broke through the level. And now that becomes a support area that you can take advantage of. Anyway, so we had that number come out. That came in good for Britain. Then we had the MPC meeting minutes come out. And uh, basically, it's uh, it's the interest rate votes reported on the calendar. And the minutes also include the latest asset purchases and you know all that stuff. It comes out from the Bank of England's website. And if you want to ever you know check that out, you just go to bankofengland.co.uk. And um, I'll even put up the link right here. Here's the actual link under the publications section. You can see their latest monetary policy and meeting minutes and those came in at the same time and uh, so obviously all of that came out as a bullish uh, move for the pound stay right there we'll be right back after this commercial break what type of investor are you conservative moderate or aggressive no matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading. I'm here with Daryl Martin. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. You can reach me right here at 877-927-6648. And don't forget, you can listen to us anywhere at TFNN.mobi on your mobile phone. So you just hop on there, and it'll just stream the radio content to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You get access to great education and training right here at TFN on all the different shows. We've got Steve Rhodes. We've got Tommy O'Brien. we got Basil Chapman. we got Kate Stoltz. Uh, was it Stalter? <laughs> I always mispronounce that. And then, you know, so we got just a lot of great guys on here. We've got Nico coming in and talking about living a primal lifestyle, making sure that we're staying fit and healthy as traders. And, of course, you got myself, Daryl Martin, here at the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So a lot of stuff on there. Make sure TFNN.MOBI, wherever you are, you can have that stream. And even if you're playing on your Kindle Fire, just hop on TFNN.MOBI and hop over play your game. You can have it played at the same time. Anyways, so let's go ahead and uh, check it on out, looking at what else is going on today. Um, all the stuff came in. Even unemployment rate over in Britain came down today. Yeah, it showed at 7.9% also. It's like there's a conspiracy for the 7.9% number going on, right? And uh, so that came out. And then, you know, looking forward a little bit, what else happened? Not too much. That was a big thing. But then, uh, of course, we had building permits this morning. That came in. Better than expected. Came in at 0.89 million, one of the highest numbers we have seen in years. And um, I get, I, I want to say it's like five years or something. I mean, it's, it's literally been, I think, 08 or something like that since we've had a number that high. And I'm what are going through right now. I'm looking at the history to see the last time I could find a 0.89 uh, come in. And at 2008, 
So you're really talking five years, August of 2008. I see uh, 94, and uh, that was a bad number then, by the way. <laughs> 94 million. And, um, but that's uh, one of the highest numbers we've seen, so that's a big housing boom. So uh, just so you know, that we, you know, Tom's talking about stuff about real estate and everything else, so definitely listen in, check that out, see what we have on TFN.com. But uh, building permits definitely coming in higher, and uh, that's, a, that's a very positive sign. And uh, then we also got the housing starts also taking off at .87 million. And again, all this comes out on the Census Bureau's website. And uh, if you need that link right there, it's just census.gov. And uh, if you want to know where like, the latest releases and everything are, they come out. And right here, you'll see that there's a whole section under construction. And um, so there'll be your census.gov, and then you're going to go to business and industry, so like business right here. And then you're going to go over to you know construction. And under construction, then you'll be able to find you know, the different things that are going on, the building permits, the numbers that come out, things like that. And so you get access to all the numbers that come out on there. But, of course, it's a lot easier just to tune in and listen to TFNN because we're here to help you out and uh, show you what is going on. So right there we got that going on, and uh, that's a housing start. That came in that obviously was positive news for the market. And if you're looking at the overnight, you know, sort of what happened, or early morning, I guess, actually would be a little bit better way to put it. Looking at the early morning, and say we're just checking out the Dow. Um, you know, you can see this comes in, and then, let's see here. Uh, let's pull up our settings and we're going to say hey show me all the hours not just the regular market hours there we go and um, yeah yeah see that massive reversal right there um, I had a user uh, email me they're like what do I do when I'm in a binary I'm making a bunch of money and then the market reverses on me and then it goes to zero and that could easily have happened to you right here on this uh, Dow um, contract so I mean this really could have just nailed you Right there at the end of the day, some of those earnings reports come out. And I think about it, when did this happen, okay? It came out at, like, what are 11 minutes past the cash market close. During earnings season, earnings com companies will report their earnings right after the cash market close a lot of times. And most of the time. Or, you know, before the market opens. Well, that can cause a massive move in the market. And so you need to tighten your stops, or maybe just get out, or be—I mean—be ready for that. You need to be knowing what's happening. And um, you know, basically, the question was, "What should I do?" And I said, "Take your profit." <laughs> you know, um, you know. I mean, you wouldn't have had enough time to take it. It fell so fast. So you, you I mean, just be aware of that. That you know, come that you know, three o'clock, four o'clock Eastern time. Um, you know, if you're up on a trade, you might just want to go ahead and get out. Yeah, it could go further in your direction, but. You know, you just just be very aware, be trigger happy, ready, okay? Uh, simply because, I mean, it can just bam and takes all of the money away that you made on the day, and that can be, you know, really challenging. So, just depending upon, you know, where you actually got in on the trade. And uh, so, I just wanted to, you know, point that out and make sure you knew, like, hey, take those out if, if you're close and you're probably at close to maximum profit anyway. Then, you know, you may want to take those profits off. So now, going ahead and you know, checking this out over here. And we had the uh, market open up. Let's see here. And we go into the news that happened this morning. So right here at 7.30 this morning, we had some news get released. Market did a little bit of a pop on that news. Boom. Pulled back down for the cash close to make sure we had a nice solid gap fill. And then it moved on back up. We'll talk more about that right when we get back from this commercial break. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. TFNN and Great Panther Silver have teamed up for another exciting silver giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Halloween giveaway will be taking place at the end of October, and for three full days, we'll be giving away silver coins and bars every hour from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. to one lucky winner randomly chosen. There's no purchase necessary. For more information and to fill out your registration form today, simply visit the front page of TFNN.com where you'll find all the details. October 29th, 30th, and 31st, we'll choose one one lucky winner that will receive a silver coin or bar courtesy of Great Panther Silver. Winners will be announced live on the air each hour for three full days. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to win free silver from TFNN and Great Panther Silver. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex, symbol GPL, or on the Toronto Stock Exchange, symbol GPR. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, just going through and looking at everything right now and checking out, like I said, we had that big drop off at the end of the day. Make sure you are taking your profits. And um, things that help you take profits, knowing things like deviation levels or just having a good profit management plan. I mean, really, if you were long earlier in the day, probably should have been out when the market came down this way anyway, right? Moved on back up. You should have been ecstatic that you it didn't keep moving down and got out. But, you know, we're all traders and we're all real and, um, you know, things happen, right? So, but hopefully you got in there, you got out, you took some good profits off yesterday. And uh, it moved on up there. And uh, we can, let's see, I could pull up yesterday's deviation levels and uh, show you sort of like, you know, what would that have pointed to as far as what you need to do. And um, let me pull those up. I'll look at it. Let's sort of show you how that worked out. Let's see. You got uh, the 16th. There we go. And um, and let's look at this one. See if that's going to work. Okay. And got that up for the 16th. And so what we can see right here is that the deviation level move up on the Dow was a move expected to about 13,449. And uh, we definitely, uh, that was yesterday. And I think we talked about this on the show because it was already there. And uh, so definitely hit that 13,449, actually hit it right here. And um, you can see it actually moved back down and it closed at the deviation level. Right there, we had to close at 13, you know, 454. So, I mean, you're talking, you know, five ticks or whatever off. Um, but basically closed at the one deviation move. 
So, you know, turned it out to, you know, could have been a good trade depending on exactly how you played it. But um, it moved on from that. And then how much further could we expect it? And, you know, 13.5, 88, obviously it didn't go anywhere near that level. Um, you can also went to 13.4, 74. And um, that was the next level that uh, we were looking at there on the 16th. And it did move on up to 13.474 as well. And that would have been your ultimate take profit zone because that would have been this full deviation. It came back down to the you know, 0.7 there. So depending upon exactly you know, how you want to play it, how you want to do it. Now looking over at today, you know, what can we expect on these deviations? Looking at the different markets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly through the different markets. We're going to pull this up. And uh, just sort of, you know, look at where each one of them are. And I guess we're on the Dow. Might as well go ahead and knock out the Dow. The Dow, uh, with that big down move yesterday and then the big, you know, up move this morning, had the, you know, the news pulled down, filled that gap in real quick right there on the open. And then with all the, you know, uh, positive news, earnings, everything else coming out, uh, you know, as a whole, I guess you could say, the market moved on back up and then just went stagnant. Okay. So um, just waiting to see, you know, what's going to happen next. And so that puts us on. We'll go ahead and look at the Dow. The Dow had the move up today of an expectation up to at least 13,515 for a half move up. And um, we're not even quite to that. So even on our high, we're about uh, you know 20 ticks off of that. So really just not a lot of movement at all, even though it felt like a lot if you were in the middle of it. Right now, it's just a lot of chop. And um, I was expecting a decent little move on the Dow, but uh, I guess with that drop down and drop back up, it really, they played against each other. So you had the good and the bad coming together. And instead of having like two good and two bad reports, you had the good and the bad earnings combined. And that really stunted the movement over there. Looking over at the S&P. On the S&P, a uh, half deviation move up. The first mark and target's 1356. And it did actually move up to 1356. It moved to 1357.75. And then uh, looking a little bit further from that, we'll go over and check out the Russell. On the Russell, uh, move up was expected to 840. And then, so we did hit the 840. You can see, man, when it hit 840, it just sort of chilled out right here, okay? Uh, we expected 840 and then 842. It didn't quite hit 842, but that 840, that half deviation. So we're looking at a half deviation day. And it's been pulling back ever since. Looking on over at the NASDAQ. On the NASDAQ right here, 27.78. Uh, let's see here. We were looking for a move to 27.80 and uh, didn't quite get it. I mean, we're talking literally just a you know, point and a half. But um, so it's it's pulling back off that as well. So really just a big half uh, day deviation. And uh, looking over on, let's look at copper. Check that out. And copper, it looks like it's been moving strong. Um, how strong did it move according to expectations? It basically moved right to a half deviation. We had a 27.80, that 33.755. So, I mean, you're talking literally just a matter of a you know, few ticks or whatever, not that much further, and it would have been at the half deviation move. And then let's go ahead and move a little bit closer. We'll go ahead and check out our gold contracts. And on gold, um, gold has been sort of you know, relatively flat, but looking at this the whole thing right here and seeing this, I just haven't seen a big move in gold today. But we were looking for a move up to 1757, and we did get a move up to 1755 in the overnight, and then in the you know pit trading session, it moved up to about 1755. I mean, a few ticks off of that. So again, half deviation on gold, and it is, like I said, it's looking like a half deviation day across the board, and unless something changes before day's end. And then looking over here at silver, we got to move up to 33.3 right there at the end there, and uh, that would have been 33.28 was actually our half deviation expectation. So uh, 33.28. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just flattened lined right there. And um, looking on over at uh, natural gas, let's see here, NG. What do we got going on on NG? On natural gas, we had to move on up to a 3.5. And so on energy, we got to move up to 3.503, would have been a 0 0.7, 3.484 would have been a half. So literally right here, okay, would have been our half move. That's where we're tightening stops. And then uh, almost hit, I mean, literally, what, like a tick? Two ticks? So basically away um, from, you know, hitting that level. So really actually a tick away off of the 0.7. But definitely the 0.5 and then just showed weakness after that. So, again, even that one's showing a half deviation day. And then looking on over to oil. On oil, we, and that's why we start, we tighten our stops near, at the, near the half deviation. We tighten our stops near the 0.7. Then we tighten them again at 1. 
And over on our oil futures, we got oil moving on up to 92.85. And uh, we had a half deviation at 93.34. So we hit that pretty quick. Um, not quite, though, right? <laughs> so it just moved up to 92.85. So that wasn't even the move to 93.34. And then it moved on down. And did it do anything on the downside? 91.55. What are 91.48 was our half deviation move down. So it got close to a down move deviation, but uh, did not quite hit it. And it got close to it, though. So if you were, you know, short, I don't I don't really see a great short signal in here looking at all this. But uh, then, you know, you may have had that there. Hopping on over and uh, looking at our ags. We got corn moving up. We know corn was a small mover today, 744 right there. And a move up to 744.25 was actually a half deviation move. So it did move the half deviation mark. And uh, checking out our soybeans. Soybeans, now that's just, you know, talk about flat, going and sell some binaries, right? And uh, just collect the premium all day long. 1503, we got to move up to 1502 was our half deviation mark. So it basically broke it by a point and flattened out for the rest of the day. You had more activity overnight than you do during the regular trading session. That's just crazy. And then hopping on over and looking at the Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar moving up to 1.038, and we expect it to move up to 1.0307. So literally, uh, we got a 1.0307 would have been our half move, and oh, wait a minute, 1.0395 would have been our half move. So 1.0382. So uh, I was like, wow, that sort of lined up weird. And uh, 1.0307, 1.0382. Oh, yeah, that's a half deviation, then 1.0318, and then 1.0335, then 1.0392. So we almost made it to a two-deviation move on the Aussie dollar today. So that move was not an expected move, was not really built into the market, and the uh, market just took off strong. And, I mean, you're talking literally 10 ticks away from a second deviation level, and that's supposed to encompass like not over 97% of all expected movement during a day. So it's really, really rare that you're going to see a second deviation move. And um, so it's already pulling on back down there. So that's not a big surprise on the Aussie dollar. So that'll show some strength for the dollar, which could be bad for some of the other currencies. Or not necessarily currencies, but even the indices. And then looking on over at the euro dollar, let's see what we're getting going on over there. we got to move up to 1.3138 and uh, one deviation, 1.3133. So just five pips above a one deviation move before it backed on off dollar showing some strength now and uh, notice how we only had like half deviation moves on our indices but we're having full deviation moves on our currency so far and they are backing off their full deviation moves which does show that we're probably going to see our indices backing off if this continues and um, you know throughout the rest of the trading day so now going over here and checking out the pound dollar pound dollar we had a one deviation move expectation to 1.6175 1.6177. I am not making this up, folks. Okay, right here. Numbers posted last night. 1.6175. Let me just... <laughs> I mean, it's just on the money. Okay? And then hopping on over here and looking at the USD franc. So literally a perfect uh, one deviation move right there. Like I said, we're seeing those sort of across the board right now on the currencies. And USD franc, let's see what we see on these. This is a little bit different than our you know major pairs. Uh, even though it is a major pair, I guess. Uh, moved down to 92.13. And we had an expectation down to 92.21, then 92.05. It basically hit right in between that on the low, but it's still a trending on down. So we'll see how that keeps going if the dollar uh, keeps getting, I guess, actually, it's getting it smashed. So if the dollar does start to get stronger on the other pairs, then we're probably going to see a pretty good rise right here in the U.S. franc. So it almost hit the one deviation on the U.S. franc. And uh, U.S. Canadian, but it definitely had a 0.5, 0.7, so it would have given you some trailing stops if you're following that. But that's just a crazy ride right there. I don't know how anybody would trade that. Unless you're trading on Nadex, you don't have to worry about being stopped out. Oh, yeah. There is that way. And then hopping on over here and checking out, we got to move down to 0.9785 on the U.S. Canadian with an expectation of a move down to 0.9820. Well, it definitely uh, broke 0 0.9820. Next move down would be a second deviation at 0.9776. Didn't quite hit the second deviation move. Not a big surprise, but did come really close. Um, only nine ticks away from that. So if the dollar does start to gain in the other pairs and continues to get in the other pairs, then we should see that also uh, start to bounce now off of that deviation move down. And uh, looking on over at our U.S. yen, 
on our USGN there. Wow. So sitting right near the highs really of the day, um, at least of the current day. You know, and uh, looking right there, we're sitting right up at 78, 87 or so. We have an expectation on a move. Let's see. Well, it moved down so far. Let's see how far do we expect it to move down? Because really, the move up is right. There's nothing um, compared to where it was yesterday. Let me back out to a little broader chart and uh, show you. See right here is where we closed out at yesterday. So it's really basically back to break even. What about the move down? Well, we had an expectation on the move down here. Let's see, we got 78.60. What was our expectation down? It was 78.63. It was a one deviation move down, and it literally hit that by three ticks. Boom. Spiked it. Went back up. Came back down to it. Went back up. Came back down to it. Went back up. Came back down to it. <laughs> and moved on back up. So one deviation move down and a one deviation retracement. Perfect move there on the U.S. yen that you can take advantage of. So... Uh, a lot of great moves. Deviations working well. Um, fundamentals coming out like uh, just uh, continuing to deliver some volatility. And uh, so as we see, we got that uh, report that's come out. We got those building permits we talked about this morning. We had crude oil inventories. They came in at 2.9 million over an expectation of 1.4 million. That of course did put pressure on crude and uh, drove it on down earlier this morning. But really, no big change from yesterday because almost all of that. Price movement was built in before, and so really we haven't seen a move in crude on the day. Right now it's just down 15, 16 cents on the day. Looking on over, what else do we got going on today? Well, uh, Aussie's going to have a quarterly business confidence report come out at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. and Oh, actually, that's going to be 7.30 uh, Central, 8.30 Eastern. And let me see what else we got that we can take advantage of. We're going to have 7.30 Central on that. Okay, here we go. Uh, China is going to have their GDP number be released. Uh, it is scheduled to be released at 9 o'clock. So um, that's the change in the inflation-adjusted value of all goods and services produced by the economy. And uh, that's obviously a very important number. This is the Chinese big measurement okay, of health, their GDP. And it's they do a Q over Y, quarter over year. And um, so that number, again, going to be coming out. It's also called their real GDP number. Okay, And that is at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern, tonight so that could cause some easy market volatility this evening and uh, that number alone may be putting markets on edge all by itself and could uh, lead to what we're seeing right now with this big pullback like i was talking about earlier i said all the currencies are starting to show strength in the dollar because they all hit their deviation levels and um, the fear of what may be coming out of china tonight could actually put all the pressure on the s p and the other markets here so now let's go ahead and let's, uh, that's again, that's the big number. So if you're a nighttime trader, you're a part-time trader, you're a full-time worker and part-time trader trying to become a full-time trader, there's a trade for you right there. Nine o'clock expects a move. And uh, the move could be big depending upon how good or bad that number comes in. Okay. And so you need to trade with limited risk. And again, hop on 15 seconds. You can have your demo account on Nadex. Okay. So at least try that out. If you're trading live money, you can have a live account with as little as five minutes from start to funded. So um, hop on over there, tfnn.com, click on the Nadex banner, and click on Create Account, or scroll down to the bottom to see the demo account sign-up link. And um, there's also a bunch of other number numbers coming out of China at the exact same time, but the biggest one is going to be that GDP number. So stay right there, folks. We'll come right back, and we'll do a wrap-up and look at the rest of the week right after the commercial break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, welcome on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour here. And uh, doing a quick wrap-up for you, what else we got going on. And um, we do have, of course, what I said, we have China coming out tonight with their GDP. So uh, make sure you are ready for that one, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. And um, also, uh, there's a lot of news coming out right now that the Troika and Greece have agreed on most, if not all, of the measurements. And so that announcement should be coming out at any moment. And um, so that, of course, will be positive news in the market. But the GDP in China could weigh it down or could make it take off, depending upon how that number comes out. Also, we're going to have the a um, couple other meetings happening this week. And so you want to be uh, you know, ready for those and the you know, impact they could have. Uh, one of the big things, though, is tonight, um, you know, sort of tentative tonight, early morning, the Spanish 10-year bond auction is going to come out. So whether that comes in good or bad, because everybody is thinking Spain needs to ask for Bella, and they're saying, you know, go fly a kite. Um, why should we if we have these low interest rates anyway? We'll do our own reforms and, uh, you know, let the ECB stay out of our business. So uh, right now, Spanish 10-year bond auction is going to be a key thing as well tonight. So you got the GDP, you got the possible positive, I guess you could say, Greek, Troika thing coming out. And then you have China coming out. Um, also, you're going to have retail sales coming out of Britain at 3.30 a.m. Central, 4.30 Eastern. So if you're a pound-dollar trader, that would be the time to be paying attention to the pound. And uh, maybe about 10, 15 minutes before that, looking at doing like a straddle, um, where you buy a you know a spread above, sell a spread below, or buy a, a binary above, sell a binary below. Also, um, the EU Economic Summit is kicking off. 
And so as they come out and they make announcements and, you know, suppresses, like listening in on everything that's being said, and I want to say that is an open door announcement. Let me check. Um, yeah, basically they're meeting about Spain, Greece, and plans for the economic policy. So there's not a whole lot of information on it right now. But uh, as details come about that, that could have a lot of impact on it. And then we have, like I said, the retail sale. That's just Europe as a whole. So that's going to be the EU. That'll affect the pound, but the EU more than anything. The pound, of course, will be affected at 330 and um, the euro itself, of course, will be affected by the Spanish 10-year bond auctions once those numbers get coming in and are finalized. And uh, then we'll roll on over here to the United States. And at 7.30, we got unemployment claims with an expectation of 367,000. That'll be an uptick from last week. So we'll see if it comes in better or worse than expected. And is it better or worse than last week? And do they revise the previous week's numbers? So all that stuff you have to take into account. We're also, and again, that's 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern Time. And then at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index is going to be rolling up. And um, everybody ought to know what the unemployment claims are, of course. That's the number of individuals who filed for unemployment insurance for the first time during the past week. And then Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, that's the level of a diffusion index based on those surveyed um, in Philadelphia. So they survey like 250 different, the Federal Reserve surveys 250 manufacturers in the Philadelphia's Federal Reserve District, and they asked them to rate, you know, how they feel about general business conditions. And uh, that number has, um, it came in a little less negative than expected last time, um, back in September, but the months before that, it's been worse than expectations every single time. So that number will have an impact on the markets, definitely, and uh, that's not a maybe, so it's a 9 o'clock central number. we will be watching that one tomorrow morning. Just getting your game plan together. Natural gas storage, that's going to be coming out. Of course, that's going to affect natural gas. And there's some crazy stuff and just some weird uh, market manipulation happening in natural gas. So definitely trade safe. Use something like Nadex if you're going to be trading natural gas. And then going on over and looking at uh, Friday, we got a few other things coming out. And, uh, of course, we're going to have that continuing EU summit going on. And we got, of course, earnings coming out today after the bell, tomorrow. You know, basically there's earnings, 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 earnings. And then on Friday... Um, the pound dollar is going to have their public sector net borrow, basically their credit lines um, are going to be put up there for you know everybody to review and see if that's better or worse. Then uh, Canada will release its core CPI, and the U.S. will release the existing home sales numbers. That'll come out on Friday. So great week, lots of news, lots of volatility. Just make sure you're using defined risk maximum leverage. All right, just stay one step ahead. All right, y'all have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, 12 to 1 Eastern Time. And happy birthday to my daughter, Felicity.